guys, Sara here. Halloween is on its way and we thought it would be a good idea to tear down a simple candy bowl. This is a basic candy bowl that you can get at any supermarket. We picked one up local here, it's around Halloween time. All I've done is taken off his robe so that we can get a better idea of what's going on before we tear him down. First, we just disconnect the top. It's not screwed in, it just comes right out. And there's only four screws, even though there's six screw places, but the back only has four screws, so we'll just quickly unscrew those. Not forgetting to unscrew the battery, because we don't have the battery in there while we're actually looking at the electronic parts. Once we're inside, there's a board here, and it looks like it's actually screwed down to the bottom so that it doesn't move, and I'm just gonna take that quickly off. Then we have the speaker, which is screwed in with two screws here. The last thing here on the bottom is the switch. In the head, we've just got the four screws and then one at the neck, so I'll just quickly take those off. And the wires seem to be constricting us from opening up the skeleton, so I'm just gonna take the glue off the back of the wires here. Now that we've got everything mostly opened up, we can kind of see what's going on from an electronics hardware position. We've got the battery pack, which sits at the bottom here, and a switch, which you can see from the outside. This provides power to the whole project. We've got a simple speaker, which actually uses the enclosure as its outside. We've got our main board. This board just has resistors, we've got a couple of different capacitors, and a couple of transistors here. And on the back, we've got our glob top microcontroller chip. Manufacturers often put this glob top on top of their microcontroller chips because it not only protects it and all of the little connections physically, but it'll protect it from humidity, moisture, chemicals, and any thermal conductivity that might happen, just to name a few things. But unfortunately, that means that we can't get in there and see what kind of chip this is. What's interesting about this board is it seems to have settings for a bunch of different situations. So they probably use the same board with the same microcontroller chip for a bunch of different Halloween bowls. In the head, we just have really simply the two LEDs that light up. We've got our sensor here, which is glued in. And even though it's glued in, I can tell from the front that it is a photo sensor. That and the fact that it's only got two wires coming out means that they used a uh, photo cell or light sensor and turned that into a kind of motion sensor. It's a really cheap way to make a motion sensor, but it takes a little bit more code, but from a hardware cost, it's a little bit cheaper and probably why they did that. This whole thing is driven by one motor. And the way that that's possible is this neck is actually what is called a four bar linkage. The four bar linkage allows the head to stay upright as the whole thing moves in a semicircular manner. Here I've set up the parallel four bar linkage that we see in the skeleton. It allows something sitting on the top here to remain parallel to the ground while it moves forward. And this only takes one motor to move that. If you're interested in making a sensor to light, we have an example code and video of that. If you're interested in making a sensor to sound, we also have a video of that. And happy Halloween!